Welcome to today's uh, session in this video and uh, in this presentation I will be talking about molecular and functional role of OSMP2B. So let's talk about OSMP2B. So as uh, you can see the OSMP2B belongs to a family of metallothionine. Metallo is extracted from metal. So it means these belongs to the family of metal binding proteins. So it means all of those metal binding proteins are directly or indirectly connected with metals like zinc and also copper. It is not only the zinc and copper which is going to attach with the, these proteins but like other proteins like manganese and cobalt, they are also attached with these proteins. But we are will be really focusing on the role of OSMP to be. So here are the important characteristics of metallothionine proteins. So if we carefully look, you can see the metallothionine can bind to the metal ions. How here you can see in the yellow portion we have the cysteine rich residues. This yellow portion is actually the cysteine residues, and this blue part is actually the zinc and the other metals. So actually the metals are chelated on this, uh, the surface of these proteins. So these may vary in the yeast and plants and the bacteria, but their major function is conserved. So actually they are low molecular weight, usually approximately weighing from 4 to 8 kilodalton, and they contain cis rich nitrogen N and C terminal carboxyl and uh, N terminal at their region. So if we talk about the special gene structure of OSMP to be so okay. here you can see in the upstream of this gene have this sequence A G A D T. Actually this sequence box A G D T is actually an ARA binding argument. So you can see it is coding for cytokine regulating transcription factor. So Although this gene has many exon, exon 1, exon 2, exon 3, but if we take the upstream of this gene, so uh, we can see there are the cytokinin related transcription factor. So it is possible that might be this protein has function in the cytokinin regulation. So we will be seeing later. So if we take the expression of this gene here, you can see this OSMP2B gene shows its high expression in the immature panicle and the three days germinated embryo. So here you can see among all, although its expression is also present in young roots but it's not available in young leaf and in its expression, medium expression is also present in the ovary and stigma. So what maybe we will be only focusing on this immature panicle and its expression. So here is the gas promoter analysis of OSMP2B. So if we attach gas promoter, so you can see uh, its expression within the different days of embryo. Here, here the newly germinated embryo shown its expression. And similarly, when there is the, the coleocotyl and the roots, they are germinated. It is also showing the expression. So when the panicle is developing, you can see the base of the, this panicle and the, here you can see the base of the panicle, it has also its expression. Why only the base? Because in the base there are the vascular bundles. So actually its expression is in the vascular bundle, that is why it is showing the gas expression in its base. So if we uh, zoom in, you can see uh, its expression is also inside the anchors and the uh, apical part and the lowest, the basal part which contains the vascular bundles. And uh, similarly, if we see at uh, the stigma and ovary, they have also their expression at the basal and uh, not only the basal side and the upper side. So if we carefully look, when, when it is attached with, the, with their pedicle or the stem branch, so then you can see at the base of the branch, it also shows the expression. So if we zoom in, you can see these are expanded vascular bundles which, which is showing the gas expression of this protein. 
So from this we can guess where the OSM key to be expressed and what can be its function. While moving next, because as I have already uh, shown that it has a sequence, it has a sequence upstream of this which regulates the cytokine. So they have conducted uh, experiment here. You can see it is showing the uh, relative transcripts in the rice fruits like zinc chloride, iron chloride, manganese chloride, and among them you can see they they all are showing the different different level of transcript in the roots and the different level in the shoot. So among them you can see the zinc chloride, manganese chloride. Although the zinc chloride has no significant effect, but among other treatments like the manganese, copper, iron, they have the different effects on this the cytokinin regulation of the their transcript level. So if we check the concentration of zeatin, actually zeatin is a form of cytokinin. So whenever uh, there are treatments, so you can see that their level is going to be changed. So it means the cytokinin regulate the transcript level of OSM T2B. So uh, if we uh, carefully look at the relative gas activity, so you can see the concentration of zeatin treatments especially at the 10 number of days when we are 10, so it is showing the highest expression. So, if we create RNA plant or OSM2B and overexpression plant, so plant exhibits the developmental alterations for Why here you can see this is the wild type and when we silence its RNA, you can see the overall growth is reduced and when we create jackal mutant so you can see the overall growth is even more suppressed and when we create the overexpression line you can see it is showing a different number of killers now so whenever we have the types of the rice plants in the overexpression it is showing the increased number of killers but while we are decreasing its expression through the RNA lines it is showing the very reduced growth so how to understand this? We have to understand how actually the plants plant respond under the stress. Whenever plant is under stress, there are two mechanisms is induced by plants. So at number one is the primary defense. Whenever plant is exposed to the stress, plant first take action and started take to give its primary defense. So primary defense can be in the form of thick to tickle that plant starts to make thick to tickle to avoid water loss. And similarly, plant also make changes to its cell wall so that uh, excessive water loss and excessive outside uh, changes may not occur to the cellular machinery. And similarly, plants also change anti microbial proteins and metabolites to cope with the risk, to cope and resist changes in the outside environment. If this fails, what happens? Plant activate another mechanism that is called inducible defense. So, if plants primary defense fail, plants started another type of mechanism which is called inducible defense. And this inducible defense is actually the triggering of hypersensitive response. So, hypersensitive response can be the ROS accumulation. We know that uh, plants started to accumulate reactive oxygen species to cope with the changes in the external environment and similarly there are the rapid ion flux this is also a sign of inducible defense and plants also make changes and do phosphorylation of its proteins so when here we, we talked about when there are the high ROS so what will be when there will be high level of ROS so it means there will be the high oxidative burst Oxidative burst is actually the concentration of ROS during initial phase of the plant growth. So there are two types of the hydrogen peroxide. So one is good for plant defense and one is not good for plant defense. So it means actually the H2O2 or the reactive oxygen species are of two types. So one can be the good and one can be the bad. So if the ROS are produced as for the plant defense, so then might be the plant take as a pathogen induced signal. That plant takes a signal that there are there is attack of pathogen, so I have to induce the reactive oxygen species. But 
there are sometimes uh, the oxidative burst with only reference to the signaling molecule. So it means when there is a biotic stress, or a biotic stress plant has to avoid excessive reactive season species because if there will be excessive reactive season species, it means there would be the high cellular damage. So what the a plant need to do? So actually the plants need to distinguish between the ROS produced under environmental stresses and the pathogen induced signal. So when a plant is able to induce changes according to the stimulus, then a plant is going to go with the stress. But the later on mechanism is still not known yet. So while taking with the expression of over 70 pb is reduced in the living mimic mutant, here you can see uh, OSMT2B, this SL is actually DM mimic mutant and whenever we are creating a line uh, of an overexpression of the lockdown, you can see the level of OSMT2B is decreasing and whenever we are applying E-cigar, E-cigar is actually a foreign molecule which can attach to the uh, cell wall of the pathogen and can induce the pathogen for ROS production. So you can see whenever we have applied elixir after the two hours, the overall expression of OSMT2B is decreased. And whenever we are applying an other type of calcycline, this is another type of uh, elixir, you can see again their expression is decreased. So what actually it gives a message that whenever we apply elixir, so it decreases the quantity of hydrogen peroxide. So it means synergistic down regulation of OSMT2 expression by OS, RAC and the semi-colipid elicitor. So here you can see we have a thyroid pool. Uh, this is treated as the control when we are applying to the OSMT2B. So as we give this treatment so there its expression is starting to decrease. And the level of OSREC is going to be increased. So, what it shows that OSREC and OSONP2B has inverse relationship. It means when the overall level of OSMP2B is going to be decreased, the level of OSREC is going to be the decrease. So, what it gives a message that might be OSREC and O. OSMT2B work as a ROS stabilizer. So because this gene is already been reported to cause uh, the production of hydrogen peroxide. So here you can see when there is the production of hydrogen peroxide, the overall level of OSMT2B is going to decrease and stabilizing the ROS. So function of OSMT2B as an ROS stabilizer, here you can see this is a line which is showing the overexpression expression and here is one line which is showing the RNA line. So when there is a decrease, so it is showing the decrease in expression and similarly when we have the mutant insertion line, so it is also showing the decrease in the expression. So uh, if we measure the H2O2 level in this overexpression line and the insertion line, so you can see the RNA line has high production of H2O2. So it means if we want to control the quantity of H2O2, so we have to control the level of OSMT2B. So you can see when the level of OSMT2 was decreased, so there was an increased accumulation of hydrogen peroxide level. So it means until and unless there was in the expression of OSMT2B, the ROS level was not too high. So it means the OSMT2B can work as the ROS given here. Next, here if we take another example, uh, here are the few hormones like the GSH group, and NAC, GST, and we know that they are important antioxidants. So when we combine the, our gene OSMT2B, so here you can see this is inhibiting the production of hydrogen peroxide ion and hydroxyl ion. So it means it is going to show the antioxidant activity like GSH. As you know here alone GSH 
which was an antioxidant and now its expression is increased. So it means OSMP2 while combined with the other antioxidant, it increases their inhibition activity of oxidation. So similarly, if we take inhibition of the salicylic acid and hydroxylation, so here you can see this was alone the control and when it was combined with OSMP2, it shows the highest percentage of inhibition. So uh, to further know where the OSMP2B is located, here you can see in the GFP along the control, it is showing within the whole inner boundary of the cytosol and uh, in this there is a, this protein is not located within the nucleus. So its only protein is located in the cytosol. So it is possible that it is preventing the ROS through the cytosol. So uh, by dealing with this function, so does the OSMP2B controls the upper upper regulation parts and upper important other agronomic traits. So if we take the expression of other here you can see other organs among the basal stem it also shows high expression and uh, if we change it you can see it shows the highest expression in the nodes and, and as we know that nodes are present within the stem so it means the level of expression is highest within the nodes and similarly it's another form like the, this is over SMP2B and it's another sister form that is OS OMP2C its expression is also higher within the panicle and the nodes so it means actually these OSMP2B are the metallocurin genes, they are expressed within the nodes of the plants. And as we know that from the nodes, uh, other metals like the zinc and copper are first taken from the soil, then exported to the stem and through passing to the nodes, it passes to the panicle. So if we take the relative expression of OSMP2B, so here you can see the zinc and iron and the copper, it is also doing the significant changes for copper and uh, other among those were not significant, only it is showing the highest uh, significant changes for the copper. So if we talk about the tissue specificity of OSMP2B and OMC, so here you can see this is actually uh, the vascular bundles and if we carefully look, you can see this is the xylem and the phloem and this is a pancreas wall, this is parenchyma cell page. So actually its expression is highest within the phloem and little low in the xylem and this is the parenchyma cell page. So its also expression, with, if we take the anthers, so you can see the middle part is also showing the uh, zinc stain expression. So similarly here you can see the relative <coughs> expression of OSMT2B was highest within the phloem, here you can see this was highest within the phloem and similarly the diffuse vascular bundles and the parent cyclic also shows the expression so this, this is actually the anchor and you can see the middle part of the anchor actually conducts the food and the metals to the, to the anchor so that is why it is showing the expression here so if we create the knockout of OSMT2B so what would be the phenotype? Here you can see this is the Y type and uh, over here is OSMP2B and uh, if we carefully look here is the double mutant and overall the length and the fertility of panicle is reduced. I mean it is now creating less fertile brain as compared to previously. But the severity of OSMP2C is a little higher but when we create the double mutant here you can see the double mutant has less grain fertility and the less grain need as compared to the to wild type. So uh, this is all that uh, phenotypic data. Here you can see the relative grain gene of double mutant is significantly decreased. Similarly, if we talk about the fertility, you can see that in OSMP2B the fertility is also reduced. Similarly, like OSMP2B. For OSMP2C, fertility is also reduced 
and by while counting this uh, double mutant, you can see the fertility is significantly significantly reduced as compared to wild type. Uh, similarly, if we talk about thousand grain weight, so there is no significant change for OSM D two B, but there was significant change for OSM D two C. So, if the knockout of the OSM D two B and OSM D two C whether decreases the zinc grain or increases in the loads. So, while we have just compared the concentration of zinc within the loads, so here is the node one, node two. Node one, leaf one, and tentacle one. So, if the first one is the ribbon layer, the second one is OSMT to be. This is the first mutant. This is the uh, their other second lines, uh, line seven and line ten. Here you can see in in the mutant type, the node two is showing the highest level, and similarly the tentacle two is showing the less level compared to the. So it means why. When we created the mutant, so it has actually blocked the supply of zinc to the pellicle, but it has accumulated all the zinc within the nodes. So it means actually uh, the complex of zinc and OSMT two B was not transported to the pellicle; it was just stuck within the nodes. So that is why the nodes is showing the highest concentration of uh, zinc concentration. So similarly, if we take up in OSMT two C, so OSEM two two C is also showing the highest concentration within the nodes, but within the pellicle, its concentration is decreased. So if we talk about the knockout of OSMT two B, is accumulating more zinc. So here you can see, and uh, in the wild type, it is showing the less signal and less intensity. But when we have OSMT two B, so here you can see this is showing the high concentration within the phloem and the xylem. So if we talk about this, this is the white type ribbon layer, and OMT two C is also showing the highest concentration of zinc within the parenchyma cell bridge. Here you can see the zinc is accumulated within the parenchyma cell bridge. So what would be the effect of OS MT two B and OMT two C knockout. So here you can see this is the wild type, and this is the mutant type. When we create the mutant of OS MT two B, although little fertility is reduced, but there is no significant effect on the anthers. But when we created a mutant of OS MT two C as compared to Dongin, Dongin this is actually the wild type, and you can see. Overall phenotype when we have created the mutant of OMDC, the overall structure and changes to the anther is more. So it, it means OS MT two C is actually causing more abrasions of the molar alterations in the anther. So but and when we have created the overall double mutant of OS MT two B, so you can see now even it has more severe changes within the anther. So if we talk. Uh, here you can see the pollen viability of OMT two B was also decreased, but uh, pollen viability of OMT two B was even more further decreased. And for the double mutant, you can see it was significantly reduced. So whether the vascular bundles of anthers is also showing the OMT two B. So here you can see the OMT two B with it was located within the vascular bundle. And similarly, OMT two C is also within the anthers vascular bundles. So uh, for a double mutant, you can see there was a less uh, expression within the anthers. So how it works? So now we have understanding. Uh, we know that usually it takes the zinc from the soil. Here you can see it. It takes the zinc from the roots, take to the stem. This is the stem, and we know that the stem has the phloem. So actually, this is the phloem which passes this zinc and copper. Here you can see this is empty to be gene which is interacting with zinc and copper. So here you can see this is carrying OSO empty to be zinc and copper. 
passes through this PCC, this is the superior chiron cells, and and it passes it after it is passes through the this is actually the expanded vascular bundles. So the expanded vascular bundles are can also be called as enlarged vascular bundles. So when this copper and zinc is passed from the expanded vascular bundles to the xylem of the expanded vascular bundles. From the flowing, it is transferred into the xylem and through this HMA2 gene ZIP3, it is passes to the parent primus and bridge. And when we know that while it was passes from the root to the stem, then stem has passes the flowing to the xylem and the xylem, actually this was the part where in the mutant, this copper and the zinc was stuck. So from there it will be passed to the xylem of the fused vascular bundles of the tentacle. So what happens actually, uh, it takes from the roots, goes to the stem and from the stem it started to move to the branches. So it will be just uh, passing through the xylem to the, of the fused vascular bundle and from then it is goes to the upper node or for the leaf. So similarly, as I, as like the zinc flows, uh, there would be the copper copper flow. Here you can see the copper also goes from the flowing to, to xylem and from xylem to the xylem of the fused vascular bundles. And similarly, YSL gene helping this. So this way, while well, actually the OSMT two B was coming from roots, going to the flowing, then xylem and then side of the fuse vascular bundles and the significantly upper nose.